Okay, welcome everyone. We are live now. I'm going to stream live on Facebook. Um, so if you are here in Zoom, welcome, but I will go ahead and um, shortly stream live to Facebook in just a moment so we'll have more people joining us. Thank you so much for joining this very special webinar today. I want to make sure that you really take advantage of the opportunity today um, to speak and ask questions about potential study programs where you could be enrolled in um, this year. So make sure you take a unique, uh, take advantage of this unique chance to do so. So our, our presentation and our topic today is a little bit, um, it's a little bit spread out over different topics. So as you can see, um, our, our topic for today's webinar is bioengineering, material science, and chemical engineering studies. We kind of wanted to mix a lot of different topics for you. Um, and so we have very special guests today. As you see, there are many faces and many um, names on the screen. You will meet all of them today, so no worries at all. We have um, different representatives from the uh, from Reutlingen University, from the Rheinwald University of Applied Sciences, and also from the Münster Fachhochschule or the Münster F um, University of Applied Sciences. And our featured programs, we actually have four programs today, so it's a very unique um, webinar today. And uh, before I get started, I don't want to get too deep into the topic. I'm going to hand it over first to Aneta. She is going to be moderating the webinar today. What does that mean exactly? So she's going to be answering general questions about studying in Germany. As you can see in Zoom, you have a question and answer function right below you. You can already start asking whatever questions you like. Shortly, we will share the links to the study programs in the chat, and you can already start looking at them and getting your questions ready for our guest speakers. For general questions about studying in Germany, Aneta is going to be answering those. So I'll hand it over to Aneta, and she can tell you a little bit about my German university and herself before we get started with today's topic. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jasmine, for the great introduction. My name is Annette and I'm a German student. I'm studying international cultural and business studies. So nothing related to the topics we will uh, talk about today. Um, but I'm here as, as a German student and uh, I will answer your questions. Also the more general ones, let's say, for example, application, um, visa issues, um, how the German education system, higher education system works in, in general. So um, take advantage out of that to ask me also this kind of questions. And um, I want to um, like emphasize the fact that we have this special guest today, um, which is really cool. So um, ask them the questions you have to this special um, programs because they are here. They know the best um, how the programs and application um, and everything works. So um, now Jasmine and me, we are from my German university and our other guests are from different universities as you already might have seen. So the question is, um, now I'm, I hope you can see um, the presentation, Jasmine. Let me know if there's a problem. Okay, perfect. Um, the question is, who is my German university? Um, even if it has the name university in it, we're not a university. But um, I would say, okay, no, I'm wrong, sorry. That way. <laughs> I would say we are like, um, our mission is to, to build bridges between you as students and um, applicants between the universities. So therefore, for example, we have Germany's, uh, German, yeah, Germany's largest database in English taught study programs. Because the first um, step when you think about coming to Germany is to find a program, of course. <laughs> this is also really useful actually for German students when they finish their bachelor's and then look for a master's because they're the, there are so many and it's so hard to find them all over in the web. So here in this search engine, um, it's great to find some. And Jasmine later on, I guess, will explain you a little bit more in detail how it, this works. Um, in the way to help you in, in coming to Germany, we also wrote a lot of articles for different topics. And we think these topics are useful for you. and um, 
I just uh, can say go through that. And maybe Jasmine can post the link to our website in the chat. So there you find these articles, their scholarships, requirements, and other. Okay, but there are not only articles and um, the study finder, but we offer more than 150 webinars per year. Not only such subject webinars as this webinar today, but also channel ones, application strategies. And um, there's a COVID-19 webinar. We do that frequently and um, scholarships, etc. Okay, now, um, last but not least, our team is really international. And we are also in different, I would say, in different um, steps of our lives. Some of us are still studying and we have graduated. We have uh, students from abroad that came to Germany. We have Germans who went abroad. So um, this is what makes us really international and into well, really special, I would say. Okay, so um, I will now go in the back round and um, answer your questions. I've seen there are already two. And I will hand it over to you, Jasmine, and uh, wish you a nice uh, and informative webinar. Perfect. Thank you so much, um, Annette, for doing that um, short introduction for us. So my name is Jasmine, and I'm one of those students that Annette said, well, I'm not a student anymore, um, that Annette said that came to Germany and for, um, and I have some experience as an international student because I did my master's here. I first came to Germany in 2015 when I was awarded a research fellowship from the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. They are a German funding organization. They typically just fund um, awards and research fellowships for um, doctoral candidates candidates and postdoctoral candidates, uh, but I got a different type of fellowship and I did research at a think tank here in Berlin for a year and a half on cybersecurity and international data protection policies. And after that, I finished my master's in international relations here in Germany as well. And now I work to help inform students of their chances of taking a similar path and getting a chance to study in Germany. And I am from the US, as you can probably tell by my accent, um, but I do speak some German now. Um, and German is very helpful, I will say, for those of you thinking you can get around it by studying in English, it will be very useful for you. So today's webinar agenda, I'm going to keep my, my presentation very short. The first half, I'm going to answer two basic questions, which programs are offered and how do you find the right program? After um, our first, our part one, we're going to have special guests we have a lot of special guests, as you saw, so we're going to have um, some different speakers talk about these study programs. Um, and I want to make sure that you all take advantage of the unique opportunity to do so. Um, Aneta will shortly be sharing the links to our first, um, our first study program, featured study program, which is uh, Reutlingen University. Um, they're going to discuss the Master of Science in Polymer Chemistry and Process Analytics at Reutlingen, and we're lucky to have Professor Dr. Andreas Kandelbauer um, from the uh, Faculty of Applied Chemistry in Reutlingen to talk to us about that. So that'll be our first presenter, and Annette will shortly be sharing the link to that program, so you can already start looking and getting your questions ready. So the first uh, question here that you should see, or the first slide and question I want to answer is how you find study programs. While my German university focus on English taught programs, um, international students can absolutely pursue German taught study programs. So if you have German language skills and you have the language certificate to illustrate um, that your skills are adequate enough to partake in a program, then you can absolutely apply for German taught programs. How do you find these? You find these on Hochschule Kompass. They are the official the database for study programs offered by the German Rector's Conference. Um, I absolutely recommend that you uh, check them out if you're interested in studying in German. And here on the bottom right hand side, you can see a screenshot of what the page looks like. I know you're, um, it's confusing when you go to a site for the first time, you're not sure if it's the right one. You can see what it looks like here. 
Next, of course, My German University, if you're looking for English taught programs. The DAAD also has a database. I always encourage ours because the DAAD does not have as many programs listed, but when it comes to funding and scholarships, the DAAD, the German Academic Exchange Service, should be your very first stop for funding. Um, here we have 243 degree programs in our study finder when it comes to the topics today that we are covering. So you can just use the filters. Um, it's very easy to use the database. You can filter on the left hand side to see the results for exactly what you're looking for. Um, here you can also filter for tuition fees. Many students come to Germany because they are pursuing universities that are tuition free. That is normal. Um, coming from the United States myself, I did not want to throw myself into debt again. I already have a bachelor's from the US um, for a master's program. So I stayed in Germany and many students do this as well. Please note that there are some marginal tuition fees for some programs and specialized programs. And the state of Baden-Württemberg also has tuition fees for international students of 1500 euros per semester. Please note that this is a very marginal tuition fee compared to tuition fee prices around the globe and some universities offer waivers um, or um, reduction for these students in these states. Some universities do and sometimes it depends on other circumstances. So check each uh, program's site for any specific information on that. You can also filter for English only programs. There are many programs that combine English and German. And um, even if you have um, maybe a B1 level of German, it's not quite as advanced enough to take part in a full German program, then you can also have more options open to you by pursuing a mix of English and German. Finally, you want to make sure that you're applying at the right time and you're looking at applications that, um, that programs whose applications are still open. So make sure you filter using when this starts and so on, and also pay attention to the score on your language certificate. I did see a question asking about the language certificate, um, if you need it. If you are not a native English speaker and you want to study in an English program, you absolutely need it. The only way to get around this if you are not a native English speaker is if your previous degree was taught in English from a predominantly English speaking country, some universities and programs make exceptions. So all of these rules are up to the program, but this is the general rule. So make sure um, you look and see if you will need an English language certificate. And finally, for those students who are very interested in top ranked universities, please note that um, in, in Germany, these top ranked universities are not really so important. The German higher education system um, doesn't prioritize top rankings like this. But if it is important to you, that's OK. Um, something good for you to know is that Germany ranks number three in the world when it comes to internationally top ranked institutions. The first is the United States. Of course, the Ivy League universities do that. And second is the UK. But what sets uh, Germany apart is that it's number three, but its top institutions are public universities. And as I said before, generally public universities are tuition free. So um, that sets us, as I say, as, in, as if I'm representing Germany, that sets Germany apart a little bit. So make sure to keep it in mind as you are looking for study programs and comparing it maybe with some other places. And finally, as I said already, please don't just focus on, on fees or names or cities, especially things like this, rankings. As I said before, rankings are not so important in Germany. Um, and I know so many students say, OK, well, I just definitely want to study in Munich or Berlin, but there are more than two cities in Germany. So please expand um, your search a little bit. I lived in Berlin for two years. I applied to a private university here, was accepted, got a scholarship, and I actually ended up choosing um, a university in Bremen, which is in the west of Germany, um, close to the Dutch border. I'm from Texas, so everything. I, in Germany is close to each other, in my opinion. Um, but I chose a smaller um, town or city to live in than Berlin. And so make sure you look at different places that you haven't thought of before. Just uh, very quickly, some very important things for you to know when it comes to searching for your program. You might see 
that some universities have the title university and some say University of Applied Science. So what exactly does that mean? In German, this would be called Universität and um, a University of Applied Sciences is a Fachhochschule and there's different types, of course. So first, you should know that you are not sacrificing anything when it comes to your quality of education or the weight of your degree, anything like this. Many students ask, well, is it better to go to university or University of Applied Science? And the answer is that there is no answer. One is not better than the other. It just depends on the type of learning you are looking for and the type of study program you're looking for. Um, if you're looking for something that's more research based, then maybe you're going to be interested in a university, but it depends on the type of research, of course, because universities of applied sciences, they will be more hands on and they will be a little bit different. And that's what you see here, the differences. And um, the biggest difference that you can see is that universities offer um, doctoral or PhD programs, whereas universities of applied sciences do not. That does not mean that universities are better by any means. Um, it just means that they have a different type of teaching and learning style. Um, universities of applied sciences are more practical and more hands-on, may have more opportunities for traineeships and internships, and universities may be more research based. Okay, so that brings me to the end. I went a little over my time, but we're very flexible today. We're not stopping at a specific point. We want to make sure we answer all of your questions. So make sure um, that you have them ready. I see you asking them in the Q&A section. That's great. But now I want to hand it over to our first guest speaker that we have today. So we are going to be talking to, as I said before, Professor Dr. Andreas Kandelbauer from Reutlingen University. And for those of you who only know two cities in Germany, um, here's a map so you can see where Reutlingen University is here in the central south of Germany. Um, so just to give you an idea of uh, location wise, so you can be a little bit familiar that with that if you're familiar with other German cities, it's in the state of Baden-Württemberg and it's south of Stuttgart. Okay, so I will now hand it over um, to Professor Dr. Kandelbauer, who, and who he has a presentation for you and feel free to um, ask questions in the Q&A about the program and he will look at them and answer them later. Thank you very much for your nice introduction. Thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. I'm going to talk a little bit about our master study program. I will introduce our master's program polymer chemistry and process analytics at the faculty of applied chemistry reutlingen university my name is andreas kandelbauer and i am the program manager of this program i will take you briefly uh, to the contents and focal points of this study program and in particular i will briefly show you what process analytics and polymer chemistry have to do with each other and why this is a super important promising field of studies with great opportunities, even in areas that may at first glance have little to do with chemistry. So what is our new master's program, Polymer Chemistry and Process Analytics, or for short PPA, all about? What are the primary objectives? Briefly summarized, it is about efficient industrial processes in general, and in particular about the efficient design of chemical processes in the context of polymer technology. That is the efficient production, processing, and application of polymer-based high-performance materials. So on the one hand, it is about polymer-based materials and composites with particularly interesting properties. It is about understanding the interplay between molecular structure and technological property profiles in order to tailor products very specifically according to customer requirements. But on the other hand, it is also about producing these high performance materials in an economically and ecologically sustainable way. There is little point in focusing only on the material properties for themselves. It is equally important to understand how the processes that lead to these materials can be operated in a resource efficient, energy efficient and cost effective way. And how these processes can be run with consistently high and defined quality. 
In our polymer chemistry and process analytics master's program, you will learn the necessary tools for designing, developing, and optimizing efficient, flexible, and knowledge-based chemical processes for producing advanced materials. Using many practical examples, you will learn to address problems like how can I make existing chemical processes better? How can I guarantee consistently high quality of my polymer-based product? How can I quickly adapt my process to a new raw material? How can I integrate or switch to new processes? How can I quickly adapt my product to new customer requirements? You will learn to think about chemical processes and polymer products in a quality-based way. You will learn to monitor manufacturing processes in real time by applying inline process analytical technology, so-called PAT methods. PAT is analytics that takes place directly in the production line. PAT provides real-time insights in the manufacturing process that can be used to control the process. PAT may ultimately lead to automation, flexible and adaptive manufacturing. PAT is an essential toolbox for a digitalization of industrial processes. Just think about Industry 4.0. With your know-how, you will create added value in a wide variety of products in which polymers play a role. With your know-how, you will conserve resources, use less raw materials, consume less energy, produce less waste and fewer defective products, and thus you will automatically improve the overall sustainability of your chemical, biochemical, or pharmaceutical product. Where does the PPA, the Polymer Chemistry and Process Analytics program, take place on the campus of Reutlingen University, close to the University of Tübingen, close to the University of Stuttgart in Baden-Württemberg, Germany, south of Germany, as you have heard already. In addition to our chemistry building, which uh, has lecture halls and teaching laboratories, you will be in our teaching and research center, process analysis and technology. Here you will find hundreds of square meters, a few hundreds of square meters of uh, laboratory and pilot plant space with cutting edge modern equipment for process analysis and also the main infrastructure for polymer manufacturing. For instance, in our pilot plant hall, you can produce new high performance polymers by means of reactive extrusion on a laboratory and pilot scale extruders. You can watch these chemical processes taking place in the machine in real time with PAT probes. This machine is used, for example, to produce specialty plastics for niche applications in medical technology, such as novel polyurethanes with tailored properties for use as cartilage substitutes, as implants, biomaterials, or accommodative intraocular lenses, for example. In our laboratories, you will get in touch with current megatrends such as process intensification, for instance, by using microreactor technology, microreactors, and flow chemistry. In microreactors, a wide variety of products like biofuel, organic or inorganic particles, polymers, and many other substances can be produced in a resource saving and, above all, energy efficient and safe manner. Process analytics is required to operate such microreactors, to control them and regulate the process to obtain a defined product composition. Deep insights into chemical processes are provided also by our reaction calorimeter, that is our fully computer controlled synthesis reactor. A wide variety of sensors can be coupled to this reactor, which makes it possible to follow conversion of substances in the reactor in situ. That means while the reaction is still running, and to observe and control the manufacturing process of the material. It is possible to very accurately measure the heat released during the reaction and also the heat release rate in real time. This is very important if materials are to be produced on a large scale. If too much heat is released too quickly, the system may overheat, leading to thermal explosions. In industry, reaction calorimeters are used for safety investigation. With us, you can work with this technique during your studies and develop chemical processes, not only knowledge-based with regard to the product produced, but you can also take into account industrial feasibility of your new synthesis at the same time. In addition to the chemical composition of materials 
their morphology and internal microstructure are of great importance. For instance, the distribution of crystalline and non-crystalline areas plays a major role. Depending on the relative proportions and the distribution of crystalline and amorphous phases in a polymer, different material properties will result. This can be investigated with PAT methods as well, directly in the extruder. Problems like this are also of great importance in the processing of pharmaceutical products or foodstuff. So you see inline measurement technology can be transferred to many different areas and will make you a very versatile problem solver. Chemical analysis is also more than the mere determination of a composition. It is about spatially resolved, locally assignable material information and process information that can be obtained via chemical imaging. This is an important way to reliably determine, predict and guarantee the functionality and technological suitability of a product at a high quality level. Chemical imaging methods, with which you will become familiar in theory and practice with us, are required for the quality control of a wide variety of three-dimensionally shaped materials. Career prospects. You will come in contact with different technical fields in this area between material development, material analysis, and process analytics. You will gain methodolog methodological know-how it will make you interesting for various sectors across various industries. In addition to the chemical industry and the polymer industry in the narrower sense, there are many other areas in which polymers play a central role, such as pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, food industry, feed industry, or the process industry in general, life sciences, but also in the areas of agriculture and automotive supply industry. Project-oriented learning is an important cornerstone in our master's program. In the context of student team projects, you will apply your theoretical knowledge and you will gain practical experience in problem solving. Through your practical work in industry-related research projects, you can directly gain practical experience and build up company-relevant know-how. Further practical relevance is also created in our master's program through excursions and industrial internships that regularly take place to major companies in various industries. This is where the insights and contacts that will help you get ahead are created. You will get to know important representatives of the industries personally, you will establish initial contacts in the industry, and you will have the opportunity for direct exchange with experts from the operational practice. Take advantage of this opportunity. By the way, the vast majority of our final thesis take place in industry. And many of our students are getting jobs directly after finishing their study program. So who are the main contact persons for the master's program PPA? We are an interdisciplinary team of experienced professors with expertise in physics, chemistry, engineering, biotechnology, and analytics. We will guide you through your master's program and support you in your learning and training phase. How is the study program organized? The master's program in polymer chemistry and process analytics is designed as a three semester master's program that builds on a subject related seven semester bachelor's basic program with 210 ECTS. If you have completed a six semester bachelor's degree with only 180 ECTS, it's no problem at all, as you can easily make up the missing ECTS during the program by completing an additional internship semester. So that's no, no real problem. Such a practical semester usually takes place in the semester before the concluding master's thesis. Admission to the master's program takes place twice a year for 15 students per semester. So you can apply for both the winter semester or the summer semester. The language of the program is basically German and English. This means that individual courses are taught either in German or in English. German courses may contain English components. Usually the slides are in English, documents or literature references are in English. Written documentation for the courses is typically completely in English. The basic structure of the program is quite clear in semester one. This is essentially a theory semester. In semester one, you will mainly learn the essential methodological basics, which should enable you in semester two 
to solve a concrete technological problem based on a research-oriented team project. You should work on this problem as independently as possible. It should prepare you for the master thesis in the third semester. In addition, you will specialize in polymer chemistry related topics and analytical topics in semester two. Just to get a glimpse on what are the lecture subjects here, the lecture modules. In this slide, you see the main modules in the course program. The courses include lectures on topics related to material sciences and analytics and also industry related topics. Important methodological know-how is also featured like multivariate data analysis and design of experiments. I will not go too much into detail here because that will become quite complicated if I show you the, the complete uh, lecture program here. This should suffice for the moment. For further information on the program, please visit our homepage. Please refer to the module handbook of the PPA Polymer Chemistry and Process Analytics program, as well as the program examination regulations. So for now, I'm finished with my brief introduction to our master's program. Uh, maybe there will be the possibility to answer questions of you later on. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for your presentation. I learned a lot because, I mean, this is not my topic. I always feel like everything is over my head when I'm seeing about the structure of these courses and what these student learns, uh, what these students learn. Um, so thank you so much. And there are some questions in the Q&A, I believe. So you can take a look at those until the Q&A session at the end. I already have some questions actually prepared that I will ask um, the whole set of our guest speakers at once that I've collected from the Q&A. So thank you so much for now. Um, I appreciate uh, your time and thank you so much for being here. It's such a pleasure. Um, now, thank you very much. <laughs> Now we're going to hand it over um, to our next uh, guest speaker. So we have today um, our next guest speaker is here, which you should see now on your screen. And again, I just want to show you this useful map. We have a few speakers, so um, I only have two of them listed here, but uh, we'll take a look um, shortly. And um, they're going to be talking to you about two bachelor's programs in biomaterial science and bioengineering from the Rheinwald University of Applied Sciences. Um, that's in Nord, uh, the state of North Rhine-Westphalia or North Rhine-Westphalia. If you don't know, it's here very close to the Dutch border in West. Germany. So let's hand it over now to our special guest. I won't take more time. Thank you so much. Hi. And um, Annette will share the links for the study program so you can follow along. Okay, I'm just going to try to switch to uh, sharing screen. Let's see if I can get this to work properly. Um, I did want to ooh, try that. So this is our university. We're from Rheinwald, as you said. Um, it's a small um, equivalent of a polytechnic, um, but uh, unlike as was described, uh, we don't see it as being so much of a difference anymore. Um, the difference between universities and polytechnics in Germany. Uh, we both aim for much the same thing, a kind of mixture of applied and uh, academic subjects. So most of the degrees at uh, Rheinwald are interdisciplinary by design, because that's the way that our university is built up. It's quite new. And uh, they're nearly all in English, or many of them are in English. The two today are biomaterial science, which is the one that I'm talking about, which is chemistry with material science, a bit of engineering and some biology, and uh, bioengineering, which is similarly a mixture of chemistry and biology, a bit of engineering, and maybe some other things that will come soon. Just changing my page. Whoops. Ah, interesting. Ah, there you go. Controls don't work quite the same when you're on this screen. So um, we're here. It's the, as they showed, easy to reach, quite rural, far enough from cities to have a comparatively low cost of living. So your rent and food is reasonable compared to a big city. Um, but within commuting distance of some of the larger cities, the nearest one is actually in Holland, it's uh, Nijmegen. Um, but uh, as you can see, Dortmund and Essen aren't that far away. Both of our courses are in Cleaver. We do have two campuses, but both of them are in Cleaver. 
uh, is the bigger campus of the two, which is in easy reach of Holland. Biomaterials science has a healthy mix of gender and country. So there's a picture of gender and countries there. But uh, our particular course has a healthy mix. Uh, so we've got uh, reasonably balanced in everything. There are about um, a bit less than half of our students come from Germany. Um, we have a higher proportion of, oh, so we have a higher proportion of international students. And it says here, because uh, some of our courses have more Germans in them. Uh, which means that English is the automatic language of choice between students and between students and staff. What else did I have to say? Oh, I had next slide. So this is our faculty. Um, as you can see, uh, we've got a lot of engineering students, so whoever made this slide was proud of the engineering facilities, um, but obviously biomaterial science also has chemistry facilities and biology-like things, materials testing and that kind of thing, which is more specific to our course. This is a general slide for um, the faculty. Um, the buildings and equipment are quite modern and new, as you can see, because we were only grounded. We only started in 2011. 2009 was a, the official start. 2011 was when we got into our buildings. Uh, we have, in biomaterials, a relatively high staff to student ratio. So our labs um, are relatively intensive compared to in larger courses. You can hear the papers moving. So this is the average per period of study. So this would be uh, more expected. I think average is a bad word there. Uh, semesters are half a year, so that would be three and a half years. But uh, one of those semesters is, a, is an internship. So it's a, like a standard BSc, so three years but there's a half year internship included. Uh, it says eight weeks before the end of the semester, so that will be the first internship, which um, nominally, according to the rules, should be, happen before you start the course. Nobody really does. Uh, that's something that really in, in real life seldom happens, so our students tend to do it during the holidays. It includes a thesis with research, that would be called honors in other systems, but in Germany or our particular accreditation, uh, we can't call it that. Um, but if you um, come from a different system, from a UK-based system, it would be an honors degree. Um, due to the freedom that students have in our system to take different modules at different times, it's a bit difficult to work out when the real time of study is, so you can actually get finished before. The seven semesters, it is technically possible, but it's quite difficult. Um, a lot of students elect or end up taking a bit longer. So what are we? Oops. We're uh, nominally material science. In our case, so material science is often taught either in a chemistry department or in an engineering department. And ours is more from the chemistry side. We have uh, slightly more chemistry staff than we have engineering staff, even though we're in an engineering-like department. Um, but everywhere, it's a mixture of both parts. And we, the leaders of the course, see both parts as equally valid. And we like our students to make the decision during the course which bit they would like to favor or whether they want to stay in the middle. Um, we also have the difference that the, we include biology, the interface, between materials and biological systems. Whoops, I forgot about that bit. So that would be as examples, recycling, natural-based materials, biocompatible materials. Oops. Oh, there we go. I should have thought of what was coming beforehand. I didn't realize there was animation on these slides. Uh, so material science is obviously already an interdisciplinary subject between engineering, chemistry, and physics as we see in this little triangle. Um, as all modern engineering, chemistry, physics, most type courses, we also include a little bit of management because that kind of course is necessary in the modern business world. We obviously have quite an intensive amount of lab work and we are proud as the course leaders that uh, we have the most labs of any course in our faculty. Not necessarily more than bioengineering, but more than the other courses in our faculty. Due to the wide range of possibilities, students can choose between different 
electives and projects so that they can focus their own course, they can tailor it to what they want to do, whether they want to do more chemistry, whether they want to do more physics-like stuff, whether they want to go towards engineering and think about making things more. Uh, it's up to them to decide, or you, if you're the student. We have reasonably good links to other parts of the course. And as I was trying to make a note um, in the questions, uh, we, we have a reasonable amount of students that switch between bioengineering and biomaterial science or in the other direction. That happens fairly regularly. So students start in one and then they decide to move to the other. It's fairly easy to do. Some of the courses they can take with them because they have the same content, so they can keep credit for those. And uh, so we have a reasonable amount of mixture there. And at the end, we also have a reasonable amount of mixture because the students can take a free elective or several free electives, which they can choose to take in of normal courses from the other subject. And they do, which was what I meant to say. What else do we have? OK, so we're on to the material science part. This is the more sort of engineering-y bit. Um, it contains a classical, um, so our course at least, contains a classical materials engineering part. Um, so it allows some of our students, if they want to, to go into that later, if that's their idea, despite our concentration on chemistry. We also try to get onto the more innovative and new parts of the subject, which would be these parts here, um, which some of our staff focus on. But now we're into the, what biomaterial science is to us. So if you uh, see my logo when I turn my video back off, we have uh, four parts, um, bio-derived materials, which would be these, so making bioplastics, for example, out of plants, um, biodegradable materials, which are not always the same thing. So you can make um, normal conventional polymers from oil biodegradable, and you can make non-biodegradable polymers, such as polyethylene, from plants. So we have two separate parts, really, or somewhat separate parts, biodegradable materials, bio-derived materials, And this slide also has to do double duty because not only do we have biocompatible materials, which is when we implant things into a body, for example, or in a more general, but uh, uh, not quite so technically advanced way, when we have food in interacting with the surface, we also have to think about what does the biology do, what does the chemistry do between the material and the uh, organism. And then we also have biomimetic materials, which would be things that are built up with a similar structure to natural materials, such as bone, maybe, or wood, which typically have a skeleton of um, fibers or particles and um, a matrix between them. So some kind of composite, but natural composites are usually more complicated than uh, artificial ones, although we are catching up. So where does it all lead? Well, I've gone through a bit fast. Where does it all lead? It leads on to potentially our own master in bionics. So to um, carry on from the last person, we also have a master. And the master in bionics uh, has an arm, which is uh, biomaterials which is effectively continuing on from our bachelor course. So we have a bachelor that we can go into. It is possible to join our own Master of Mechanical Engineering, although that's comparatively difficult because there are a lot of sort of the standard basic engineering things that we don't cover in our materials bachelor because we have a lot more chemistry and other subjects to do. Of course, it is also possible to start work immediately afterwards. It's a bit new for Germany, but uh, a bachelor is a, a, a level of qualification that you can start work with. There are plenty of companies in our state, North Rhine-Westphalia. Um, so there's a big number there of how much money they have. I had a look around. Um, there are some jobs available 
depending on whether you lean towards chemistry or materials, you get reasonably well paid. Uh, materials tends to be a little bit better paid. Um, chemistry is a harder work market at the moment, but one of the advantages to studying an interdisciplinary subject is that you can sell yourself as a chemist or a material scientist, depending on which jobs market is better at the time in the place that you want to go to. Uh, what else did I want to say here? Um, so yes, we can uh, continue into, uh, into a master's, we can continue to a PhD. We have a few PhD students at our Fachhochschule. Um, we, as a university, are not allowed to give them the degree directly, but uh, it doesn't mean we don't host the students. It doesn't mean we don't teach the students. They live in our laboratories, just like PhDs anywhere else. So, well, so I resumed through a little bit too fast. This is the next person. So I will, I, can't, I haven't got the time here, but I'll switch over to the next person, which is Joachim Fenstler. Um, shall I, how are we going to do this with the thing? I'll, Turn it off. Yeah, so Neil, if you stop sharing, I can share my You can share screen. your own, okay. Yeah, Neil, thanks. So you did a very well introduction of the Rhine Valley University. So there is, uh, with respect to university, not much left for me now, just looking what screen I have to share. I think this one. Hopefully it works now. I think this looks good. So um, this is about bioengineering. It's another uh, English bachelor course at our university, which is certainly a specialty of our university that we have with a couple of uh, bachelor of science um, English courses. The majority of the German universities and also applied universities just have um, bachelor courses in German and the master courses, some of them are in English. Now, um, the faculty... Um, I am located at is the Faculty of Life Science. So uh, we have there are a couple of fields at our faculty. It's food science, biology, biochemistry, biotechnology. That's why I'm talking about um, agricultural science, environmental science, and health science. Unfortunately, I, there is a construction work right going in front of my window, so maybe you hear some some noise in the back. This is something I cannot uh, avoid today. So this is just an overview of the activities we have at our faculty. And uh, now let's come to bioengineering. It's like um, the biomaterials. It's also seven semesters. Um, there is you get the Bachelor of Science is full in English, and it's also located at the campus in. Um, there is a mandatory preparatory internship of eight weeks and in the sixth semester students go for a semester abroad or an internship seven semester bachelor thesis and it always starts in the winter semester no inscription in the summer semester now what is it all about and i i've i've seen that was also already the question what is the difference between bioengineering and biotechnology honestly it's a big debate what is what and um that what we, I would rather define our study course biotechnology with, with a glimpse of the, um, let's say the conventional meaning of bioengineering, but usually these words are used um, synonymously. So therefore I wouldn't fix too much on the words. If you wanna study bioengineering or biotechnology, look in the curriculum what's inside. So what bioengineering is about, it's at the end you connect natural and engineering sciences. So we have this natural sciences like chemistry, uh, physics, biology from microbiology, molecular biology, cell biology, and so on. We have also, we do also work on agricultural biotechnology, medical biotechnology, and industrial biotechnology, and of course, also engineering science stuff. So you see what Neil already said with respect to uh, biomaterials is even more true for bioengineering. It's very broad what you what you learn here. So don't go in too, much, in too much depth through the curriculum because everything is online. So you can easily go to, if you're interested, go to our website, look at the curriculum. I would even recommend you check the module descriptions and then you get a very good idea what is actually being taught. Just very briefly that you get an idea uh, what we do here. This is the 
curriculum of bioengineering and you see in the first semester, second semester, it's about the basics, it's math, it's genetics, it's biochemistry, it's chemistry and so on. And then the higher semester, we come to more applied topics. We go, for example, to instrumental analytics, uh, process engineering for semesters, bioprocess engineering, bioinformatics, of course, we also have. So that's right around about the, um, the curriculum and similar to what Neil said in mechanical, uh, sorry, in biomaterials, also we have elective modules where you have, to, you have the possibility to go more in a field if you're interested. For example, if you are more interested in uh, agricultural biotechnology, you can go to select this module, agricultural biotechnology and biofuels. If you're more interested in right biotechnology, you can choose technical enzymology, for example, or if you want to go rather for the medical biotech field, you can choose pharmaceutical biotechnology and immunology. We have other topics here. And just as I teach this, what um, is a pharmaceutical biotechnology and immunology, I'm this where I'm coming from. And this is what I'm actually also teaching that you get an impression what professors you have at the end. Well, I worked in my career as an infection biologist on DNA vaccines. And um, therefore I know very well these guys who from BioNTech who actually have uh, RNA vaccines against Corona were the first ones uh, developing this vaccine. So we work together also with these people uh, during our, um, during my time when I still worked in the vaccine business. It's just to give you an idea what the background is. So biotechnology is also at the end rescuing the world from Corona. So um, just uh, to get you an idea what you can do with your biotechnology stuff at the end. Okay, so now, uh, now I want to ask you, uh, let's say state a question, what excites me about bioengineering kind of. So um, this is what is in the curriculum, but what is so special studying bioengineering in Kleve? Because the curricula, of course, you will see similar curricula, maybe not in English, but in Germany, you will find these curricula um, somewhere else. So the quality is very good. So our students are very, um, the equipment is very good. So the quality of education is very good. We get very good feedback. But what is so special about studying bioengineering and this honestly the special things are especially our students so these are our students so if you look here uh, this is a, a picture of a seminar of course i asked them because that was for a senate meeting where i where i needed that and you see i asked that then all of the international students to uh, raise their hand and you see that we have a good amount of international students more precisely we have around about 30 to 40 percent german students 60 percent are international students from the European Union, but also uh, from all around the world. We have students from 65 nations in our study course, bioengineering. So we're certainly one of the most international study courses in Germany and um, on bachelor's level for sure. Um, and what Neil already mentioned is the campus. And if you look at campus, um, we were voted the fifth, uh, we are within the top five um, Beauty, most beautiful campuses in Germany. So this is how it looks like, and this uh, students really appreciate that. Snow is quite rare, but uh, sometimes you also have snow there. Now back to bioengineering. This is what it really looks if you study bioengineering. So this is a lab course where we do, for example, a fermentation, um, and we monitor in real time the gas and ethanol production, and then you can calculate the kinetics. Uh, this is a similar lab course where we do a continuous fermentation in uh, small bioreactors. So these are the lab courses where all students do. Um, this is how it looks like if you do this continuous uh, process. So you will then learn how to connect all these tubings and so on. If you then decide to study bioengineering, don't worry. But we also have this internship semester abroad. And um, I give you one picture of an internship semester abroad. This is this one. This is I received from, from a student who went to Hawaii doing her internship, which is not a too bad choice in this case. And by the way, just the story, she was uh, in my office before uh, choosing the internship and didn't know what to do, where to go. And I recommended her, what do you like to do? And then she said, surfing. And then I said, well, um, then tried in Hawaii, and she applied herself at the Hawaii University, went there for an in, for a, for a study abroad and internship in the lab in the laboratory. And I got a phone call from the head of this laboratory telling me it was the best student he ever had because she was, of course, highly motivated. So this is just a an, a glimpse of an idea what our students are doing. And of course, we also have projects, and this is an example of a project in my lab. We work with smart glasses and try to 
uh, uh, implement these smart classes for teaching. And this is uh, uh, this is Kanchan um, uh, wearing the class, smart class. This is Junior, where we were at, at a trade for presenting the project, where we then try to um, ameliorate the interaction with the um, with the equipment in real time. That's just the project that you have an idea how this looks like. And you see here our happy students uh, at the uh, at the fair trade who did the project presentation. So this is um, um, Eric. He's from the States. Um, and Junior, I already you have already seen. He's from uh, Cameroon. Uh, this is um, our assistant. He's from uh, Germany. Kanchan is from Nepal. And Yvonne, she's also from Germany. That you just have an idea. Um, about our students. Your thesis could look like this. Um, this is Felicia doing the thesis in my lab. These are uh, staff scientists, and this is, uh, she did a biomer polymer production. Here it's what she got um, in our uh, bioreactor. So just so you have an idea how all this looks like, and you, many people also do a thesis abroad. This is an example um, of the thesis of uh, Patrick, um, who then after leaving with a bachelor, uh, from our institution, he did directly work, went to the Max Planck Institute as staff scientist, and then he also did his PhD there, which is not too bad. Okay, so this is a detail. And um, then, of course, what you learn if you uh, study bioengineering at our site is science. So this is an example uh, uh, what I still did in, in Würzburg, but this is a PhD student of mine, Katharina. And uh, what we did there is uh, we demonstrated that we could um, get uh, bacteria into tumor cells and then with this deplete macrophages and with this heal tumors. And this is data. And for you, as, as if, if you not yet started studying, this looks horrible. But at the end, you learn how to read that, learn how to interpret the data. And this is, of course, also an important part of studying bioengineering. So this is the part I wanted to present. And unfortunately, I'm just stopping now the sharing. So um, unfortunately, I have to leave immediately because I have finance commission in parallel. And this is not so unimportant <laughs> to be in this commission. And um, however, don't worry, Anna is still there. And if there are questions, Anna can respond to all questions. So thanks a lot. And now I will hand over to Anna. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you so much for your time. And um, it's okay that you have to go. I'm so glad you had time to present um, for a short amount of time. Um, I believe now um, it's time to go to our last presenter and um, our final university program. And so let me quickly uh, introduce Professor Dr. Hans Christoph Merten um, from the uh, Münster University of Applied Science or Fachhochschule Münster. And just to show you again um, where Münster is, if you're not as familiar with the German landscape here. It is also, um, I say again, I say everything is close to the Dutch border. Again, I'm from Texas, everything's close by to me here, but that's not the case. But I'll hand it over now to Professor Dr. Um, Matten. Okay, thank you very much. So I want to share my slides. I hope you can see. Uh, okay, does it work? Okay, welcome to everybody. Um, I'm presenting our master material science and engineering. We are offering two masters uh, in English given. The first is uh, um, chemistry or chemical engineering and the second is material science and engineering. And I'm speaking about uh, material science and engineering. Okay, um, University of Applied Science Münster uh, shows 12 faculties are plotted here. The names are not of importance. Um, 15,000 students are working here. And from these, 6,000 are in the field of engineering science. And these are plotted in gray. And um, the master material science is um, yeah, offered by the Faculty of Chemistry and Physics. So we are working together and not only we two, but we are working together also with business administration and engineering, mechanical engineering, electrotechnology and computer science. 
all are contributing uh, modules um, for this for the lessons, and um, I will come into detail later. Um, we are very strong in science. Uh, 30 um, third party funds are in the range of 50 million euro per year. This is um, one of the best of um, University of Applied um, Science in Germany. And um, of course, Münster is popular, uh, not only due to the old city, um, but um, it's um, popular with students um, because um, the conditions for studying are very nice here. Why material science? Materials are um, the basis of technical products. They determine uh, function and the quality. And I'm showing here on the right side um, yeah, an overview. And um, we hopefully um, will solve yeah, up-to-date problems in the future in the field of energy, in the field of medicine, in the field of yeah, medicine again here, or buildings, or mechanical engineering, um, light, and um, wide field. And uh, about 5 million employees in Germany are working in the field of material science in many, many companies. And uh, most of the uh, technological in Innovations are based on new materials. I think it's about 60 to 70%. New materials are of importance and um, which are um, topic in our study. They are listed here, classical ceramics, polymers, of course, uh, a lot of chemistry um, is a um, topic or subject, um, magnetics, of course, is important for data storage or electromotors or generators to produce electricity. In optics, um, of course, fibers and waveguides are of importance for communication uh, technology. Electronics, not only the semiconductors, but hopefully in future also superconductors will help to solve problems in energy transport, uh, energy production, I told about, but um, as we learned uh, from our colleagues before, um, biology and medicine is of importance um, and um, there we can um, offer also some lessons. And of course, nanostructures are of big importance and uh, there are many uh, scientific groups in our campus uh, working in this field. Which are the most important problems we have to solve. And uh, in principle, you as a future student should solve this uh, too. Um, hydrogen technology for fuel cells or photocatalysis, batteries of high energy density are uh, still an open problem. Yeah, um, there are a lot has to be developed to solve the problems. Uh, lithium ion uh, batteries are, I think, not the up-to-date solution. And at least um, binding, chemical binding of carbon dioxide, dioxide and um, all what belongs to green technology or green hydrogen uh, will get will be of importance. Or another point, global water supply, um, in particular a desalination of seawater, um, for example, by nanotechnology shown here using graphene. And um, this shows that uh, nanotechnology is of importance and we need to understand it from the point of chemistry and from the point of physics. Then you see here um, electronic scrap. We have to um, um, search for substitution of rare earth metals and to solve the problems of recycling. And of course, plastics, microplastics, all these problems um, must be solved. I do not want to go into detail of this um, slide, but I like it very much because it shows that material science uh, is a very huge field where you can work with a lot of tasks, starting from mining and sourcing, then 
coming to design of materials, design of products. This is a um, very important topic of our um, master. Then processing also is very important and you will learn a lot about this. Most important and um, most labs are um, working in the testing and analysis field. They will learn a lot. And then more and more important is uh, the question of reuse and recycling. And we also work together with um, yeah, other, um, other faculties uh, from business and uh, administration. And main question, what are the costs? There we will discuss what is the best solution we have to find and at least um, life cycle, energy, environmental impact, and so on uh, will be discussed uh, also during the studying. Why interdisciplinary? We have learned in the talks before a lot about this. In principle, it's not or no more possible to do material science um, only with knowing something about chemistry or physics. We have to work together and um, not only we too, but also um, to solve problems or to develop new uh, products in nanotechnology or biology. Um, we also have to speak with colleagues from electrical and mechanical engineering. And of course we have to do simulations and we need to computer science. And um, this we offer in our master material science as uh, the interdisciplinary uh, study. Um, long time ago, engineers were working in, in the field of yeah, large scale products. Um, today we are working in a yeah, nanoscale um, field. Uh, promising materials are, yeah, let's say, um, carbon tubes or carbon balls, um, coated uh, nanoparticles, and um, I think everybody knows the problems uh, in the field of biology, um, corona problems, and so on. And I think uh, in the next years, more and more, as uh, a combination of chemistry, physics, and biology uh, will be important. Nevertheless, we need a full understanding of what is going on in an atom to be able to build later with atoms. And therefore, we all work together on our campus with all the other faculties. Get a rough um, feeling of um, our structure. I show here uh, three columns. The first column is dealing with understanding of materials also could call it theory. I think understanding is much more. The second column is analysis of materials. That means surface science or X-ray analysis or optical analysis, um, chemical analysis, of course. And the third is building or designing new materials. This is technology of materials. Uh, and here we work together with um, other uh, faculties. Um, to all these topics, we offer electives. I will show in the next slide in details, uh, different electives um, and compulsory modules. Yeah? Solid state physics and semiconductors, everybody has to learn, independent on coming from chemistry or physics or mechanical engineering, dielectrics, uh, macromolecular chemistry, and very important for us is uh, to bring you to work just in the beginning, in the first semester of studying, uh, working in a lab. We're starting with literature research, but then you are going to do practical experimental work. And every lesson or nearly every lesson um, is also an um, practical. So you are sitting um, in a big room, hearing your lesson and doing your work with your friends. And at the end, uh, in the fourth semester, you are doing your master thesis, typically in a company. Yeah? So we want to bring you as um, early as possible and as good as possible into industry. Okay. 
I do not want to go into detail. These are all our offered modules. And most of them in English, about 80-90%, and few are given in German. We have the compulsory modules everybody has to hear. Then we have the project box I told just before, then a big amount of electives. And yellow means these uh, modules are related to chemistry. Blue, these are related to physics. And what you see, chemistry yeah, gives, let's say, more or less 50%, uh, um, physics 40%, and then we have some modules coming from mechanical engineering or electrical engineering um, or business administration, uh, um, giving, let's say, 10% of the module. Okay, then we have um, some bridging courses. That means if you are coming from chemistry, you need a little bit to know about physics. And to build a bridge, we offer this. Vice versa, for students coming from physics who need knowledge in chemistry, so we make you fit um, for studying this program. About 30 professors are working in uh, this master, about uh, 50 colleagues uh, in the staff, staff members for semesters. The degree is Master of Science. Typically, we are starting the winter semester, um, but we also can uh, offer start in summer semester. Admission uh, grade 2.5 and English B2. Fees are more or less zero. It's only this 300 euro um, per semester. If you want to do a double degree, also this is possible in cooperation with an university in Poland. Our students are coming from all over the world, shown here. And um, we see about a third of students is coming from Germany, most uh, from our university here in Münster. And then um, we yeah, succeeded in distribution or homogeneous distribution um, over a lot of countries. Why are students studying here? Because we offer well-founded lessons and practicals, uh, typical for University of Applied Science. We are international and uh, interdisciplinary, I told before, and very important, the applied research, um, which you will find also at the universities which have been presented before. And typical for us, uh, the thesis is done in industry. And this helps you um, to yeah, find an open door and to work after the master's thesis in the company. We have a lot of industrial corporations worldwide, and we are teaching in small groups, as you have seen before, I think, um, also for the other universities. And I have to correct a little bit the introduction. Of course, PhD um, degree is given by the um, universities in Germany. But can do your PhD also at the University of Applied Science, but in cooperation with a classical university. And uh, this works very well here in uh, Münster. There's a lot of science uh, done here. Uh, we are cooperating with two institutes on the campus construction and functionalized materials and uh, Institute of Optical Technology. Uh, so you are very close to the science when doing your master. And the science is, of course, as I told before, very strong in chemistry. So if you have to decide, should I do a master in chemical engineering or material science, um, can do both in principle here. Um, electrochemistry is very strong here. Um, optical um, science to uh, develop fibers um, or um, uh, guiding light in um, uh, and um, laser material processing is in a second very strong field. Here we are cooperating very strongly with colleagues from 
mechanical engineering, um, chemical analysis, electron microscopy, surface science is very strong. We have a lot of partners, only some. Um, I do not want to go into detail. I only want to show we have a lot of partners in Germany where you can also do your master thesis in the United States, Russia, um, Europe, up to Australia, and much more. Um, about 10 PhD students um, um, presently working here in the field of physics, 17 PhD students in chemistry, and we have four junior professors in chemistry and physics. And the big advantage of this master material science is that uh, we want to offer an holistic science and um, development of materials as shown here. We do not um, produce experts in surface science or in nanoparticles or in crystal structure, but uh, we offer all these yeah, analytic methods and you are an expert or let's say more or less a general expert. About the job opportunities, um, of course, you will find a lot in industry, uh, mainly in, chemist uh, in uh, chemical industry or processing engineering, for example, BSF or Bayer. BSF has a uh, big company here in Münster. Um, automobile technology or airspace, for example, BW, BMW, ESA, and so on. Um, because um, do not learn only uh, details about chemistry, but about um, uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and all related to material science. So um, you will be a um, yeah, good candidate for a lot of companies. Siemens in mechanical engineering, for example, of course, optical, electrical industry, um, medical technology. We have an own master, but only in German, uh, medical science, medical technology, um, energy, recycling, and so on. Oh, or you can work in occupational fields, research institutes, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, for example, there we had um, two students doing their master thesis there and both were very happy the institute and the master students fraunhofer they started a very big company here in münster uh, for the production of batteries um, technical development in industry or federal agency could be a field for you after studying or the appraiser or technical expert or you can do in science at all university that's a very yeah, big advantage of our system. You can switch to a classical university after your master and do your PhD, for example. How to apply? As told before, grade is 2.5, English B2 level. This shouldn't be a problem. You should have a bachelor in physics or physical engineering on chemistry, chemistry or uh, chemical engineering on material science or in mechanical engineering uh, with a strong part of physics or chemistry or material science. Or more um, bachelors are also possible, but uh, with a strong part in this field. You will find all this information on our homepage, uh, all the data, and there you also get access um, to the online application portal plotted here, uh, and there you will be guided step by step um, for application. Uh, the window is open and it's closing end of May. So you have a little bit time um, for online application. If you have questions, of course, you can contact me, but better you contact Mrs. Kuhn um find everything here mrs kuhn will help in any questions and uh, but on the other hand you can contact me um when starting we have student mentors not only mrs Vespur, uh, but much more now um to take you by your hand and um, bring you safe through yeah our city and through the studying okay thank you very much
for the first, and I think questions will be discussed later. Yes, thank you so much. Actually, questions will be discussed now. So, um, so th first off, thank you so much for um, for presenting today. Um, if you would like, all of the guest speakers can come back. I'm going to. Um, I've selected some topics to ask questions to not take too much time. So I kind of looked at the range of topics we had. Um, so you can feel free to all, all speakers come back and I will pose the questions to kind of you as a group. So um, I looked, I will say first off, there are a lot of questions about application require eligibility requirements and can I apply with um, this uh, degree and I did this and I uh, do I need this? please go and look at the websites because they are in detail the eligibility requirements. If you, for some reason, fall into some gray area where it might not be so clear um, whether or not you are eligible and you are not sure after checking your degree and the course modules you had from your previous degree and you check the Anabin database, of course, contact, um, contact the programs and um, please uh, feel free to do that, but please check the course websites because they have the most detailed information. So the first uh, range of questions um, is regarding employability in Germany. So, so many students are worried about that and asking um, about any partnerships that universities have with corporations or companies when it comes to whether it's internships, but also employment afterwards. And I know um, that you mentioned in your presentations when it came to employability and certain percentage a percentage of students finding employment, but maybe if you could go into detail, um, is there a career center or some sort of like job placement or assistance helping students, you know, create their resume and get ready for for graduating and looking for jobs in Germany. Anybody can answer it first. You, you can all come back with your cameras. It's no problem. So anyone can answer first. No, am I on? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Just I turned it off at two places. Um, so for us, we have a career center. I think most universities do. Um, I think I mentioned it in the chat that there is a there is a difference between German universities and US and UK universities. It's to do with the fees. So um, they both have a lot of money in their system. So they have a lot more support for students. Uh, you get what you pay for it effectively. So here you're not paying for very much. So, so um, be reasonable what you're going to expect as a student. Um, you, we just cannot provide it. Um, not really talking about me, I'm talking about our support staff. They, they really don't have the, the breadth to do that. Uh, but there are careers departments. Um, they, they do provide some help. Um, it depends a lot, so I, I don't really know very much about the other two universities. We're comparatively new and we're comparatively rural, so we don't sit. Um, I, so one of the pointed parts of the question was, do we sit on a company and just send our students to there? Um, not so much. In our case, we don't really have that kind of contact. We don't have that density of um, companies. But uh, we have a different advantage. We sit right on the border to Holland. And um, so you can just go straight over there. There is a bit of a problem. So a student visa, an international student visa, only allows you to work in the country that you are a student in. You're allowed to go to all of the other countries. But uh, income you can't take from another European country. Um, so. Uh, we we quite surprisingly we're reasonably successful at getting students into jobs, is uh, but but uh, it, it's uh, not a a huge industry of trying to do so. I'll stop talking. Oh, no, that's a great point. I think that's important for students to know, especially students coming from the UK and the US, like myself. And you have like a career services center. There's always someone there for any type of different, I don't know, topic you need. And um, but that's a great point that you are paying a lot of money for those services with the tuition fees. And if you're attending a tuition free university, um, you have to expect that there is not going to be um, as much of these services available to you. Of course, there is someone you know, your advisor or people within the department that might have some connection or can help you or give you tips, but in terms of a, a bigger, um, sort of more established foundation of this is um, may not be the case. 
So with in, in, in regards to internships, so I saw some of the programs, or if I'm not mistaken, all of them had required internships with internships as well. Students can go abroad for internships, like this uh, student photo from Hawaii that was shown. That's really neat. Um, I myself did internships uh, abroad, both in my undergrad and my master's program. So um, are, these are required. And um, is it encouraged that students do that in Germany? Or can they also, it's OK for them to go abroad, or it's only a small percentage? As, as I'm the only one on, um, yeah. so, so our, our particular course has a requirement that uh, German students go abroad. Um, so uh, we, uh, we require a certain amount of internationality among our students. And so we require the German students to go somewhere else. Um, other students, because they already are abroad, don't have to do so. Um, they, they can. So okay. some of them uh, do go back home or they, um, particularly at the moment, Corona time, they just get a job where they can. It's very difficult at the moment. That's a big problem. Um, but uh, we, don't, we don't make international students go uh, to a third country. Um, we do have an alternative. I don't know how well it came over. So we have uh, the alternative to the internship is a year abroad, which would be um, a or a semester abroad, sorry, because it's a semester project. Um, and they would spend that semester in another university. In the case of biomaterial science, they would spend it in material science or chemistry or an or a engineering degree and do their normal uh, semester. OK, perfect. Um, I want to ask specifically, there's so many questions regarding um, so the language requirements, but not just that, also with, with uh, classes there. So as I said before at the beginning, um, the language requirements are the language requirements, and it's not to keep students from learning, it's to help students learn. So if you don't have a certain level of English to partake in the program, then you're not going to set yourself up for success. So for those asking um, exactly what the requirements are, you can look specifically on the website. Um, and there are some programs which uh, you can choose some German classes if you have that. But for students who don't have German language skills, because it is so important for, for the job market um, to have some, some level of German, are there uh, German classes available for these international students um, to take as part of the curriculum or um, on the side during their studies? Well, I, I think the last person had them. Uh, we do as well. So um, biomaterial science, I'm not so sure about bioengineering. Oh, well, they do as well because it's the same university. So we had, we had until recently free courses in languages, including Japanese, that students can take. And we now allow them to take it as an elective. They can get credit points for it as well. Um, the, it uh, isn't an issue, though. Um, I think that that sounds way more um, prescriptive than I uh, have my actual personal experience is students complained they couldn't get a place. I phoned up companies and an American woman answered and said, what do you mean? Of course, we speak English here. Um, the Dutch company that I work with, they have a research center and there are Italians and uh, French people and Dutch people working there. So the only language that they all speak is English. There, there yeah. isn't another one. So. Um, we have we're in a, at a time in the world where and a place where it just happens that english is doing pretty well so um it's not really as much of a problem as you think it is there is uh, the thing that um i should have mentioned with the careers the uh, fixing your cv germans have a very weird and um formulaic system of cvs um, they also use a, a picture, which in England would not be legal. Um, they, so they request a picture of candidates very often. Uh, you're not allowed to do that um, in the UK. It's, it's not actually allowed. Um, in EU rules, it's very dubious anyway. Um, so it's one of the things that, that, uh, that students struggle with, and they need uh, so they get a little bit of help. Our students do anyway. They get a little bit of help writing a German style CV uh, to try to get a position. Yeah, that's a really great point um, that there are going to be differences with things like this, even though students may consider themselves experts in, in writing or CV, that it's, it's just a different process here. Um, and finally, um, just one more question. Oh, go ahead. Hi. Yeah, um, the same uh, is valid for uh, Münster. 
uh, we also have a career center uh, where students can get help uh, for um, writing CV and so on. And we also offer a module German language where you can get credit points. Yeah, and we want to make or to um, yeah help the students to um, yeah find through re uh, daily life. Yeah, and we have uh, mentors um, taking them by hand and helping. Yeah, and it works very well. And um, let's say about uh, thirty percent of the students are coming from from Germany, so there's in um, close contact. Yeah, and um, it's working. And the um, second point. Um, our master um, thesis is um, yeah done, principal or uh, coached by um, PhD students speaking English. Yeah? Uh, more than fifty percent of um, the colleagues from the institutes coaching our master students are not from Germany. Yeah, they are sitting here um, and uh, coming from abroad. So English is the um, main language. Yeah. Okay, that's a great point. I still, I think it depends on on where students choose to go and how important German will be. So maybe, for example, if students living in Berlin, maybe it's not going to be vital no. for their survival. But I use my German much more uh, when I lived in Bremen than I do in <laughs> Berlin. So I think it just depends. And I think it's great that students have the option and um, and have that kind of support if they need it. If I may just add, in Reutlingen, we also have some similar organization like Career Service. We call it Reutlingen International Office, where students can go for assistance and they organize a lot of uh, activities. Yeah, that's a great point. I think um, for students coming from um, not just outside of Germany, but maybe just outside of, of Europe, um, not really knowing what the etiquette is when you are applying for a job. Um, and I mean, I, I did um, when I did my research fellowship at a think tank in Germany, the etiquette was different than when I was a guest fellow at a think tank in Rome. So having students kind of get some help here, whether it's filling, creating their their CV and um, what what the process is when when applying for a job, what the etiquette is, I think it's um, really great. So um, I'm glad that everyone has some sort of feedback and it comes to support. Um, I think. I see some more questions here. I think I'll just ask one more because we did go over time and I want to respect everyone's time here. Um, so someone's asking about German. I already talked about German. I want to go through some of the answered questions that I didn't exactly see. I think I'll just ask um, a question um, of mine for students who are watching, who are interested in applying and some who are even planning on applying. What is the biggest piece of advice that you can personally give for them for your program? Um, some students think, oh, well, I have to have this work experience. I have to have this. Of course, you need to meet the eligibility requirements. That's clear. Um, but anything special, whether it's some sort of internship experience or anything else, is there anything um, that will um, qualify them more extraordinarily than other applicants or any advice that you can give students? Yeah, so in principle for Münster, I can say um, material science. Uh, first, we um, yeah, have a view on, on the grade. Yeah, the better the grade, the better. <laughs> and um, the other point is um, if there's an yeah, interest or a strong interest to study here in, in Münster, since Münster is not Berlin, not Hamburg, not Munich, yeah, um, but there's place to live for students which you can pay. Yeah, this is in contrast to München in Hamburg. Yeah, and uh, this would help. On the other hand, we have an, uh, about 1,000 students last year wanted to study uh, in Münster Material Science. And we offered about 50 places. Um, so now we are uh, facing 1,000 applicants. And uh, if there are students, who um, can show they want to stay here in, in Münster, that would be helpful. So on that theme, uh, I would say uh, there, there's some tactics that students can use. They can uh, choose a subject that they really want to do and try that first. 
But if they leave themselves enough time, there are plenty of degrees that are undersubscribed as well, including at some of the top universities, that uh, if they're clever, they can find the ones that have less students on and it's easier to get on. Um, so the number of students that people take depends on how much space they have, how many labs they can run, and not how good the students are necessarily. Um, and there's certainly the question of how much is it going to cost to live, it makes a big difference whether you live in a farming area or a small town or a big city. Um, it it uh, is one of the major costs. So the thing that, um, that I had to learn as a student, I had to pay for my degree, but the, the fees are nothing, absolutely nothing compared to the cost of living. Regarding special advices, I would not uh, have many requirements um, that would especially be necessary for applying for a master's program here. The main feature is maybe that you can focus either on the analytical aspect or on the material aspect, on the process aspect. So if you come from the, from the physics side or from the chemistry side, you will both in both directions, you will find your, your interest here. But of course, it should be kept in mind that we are, have a quite specialized topic uh, regarding process analytics and polymer materials. So that should be maybe one, one, one piece of mindset. Should take care. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's a really good point. And, and for students also to just think about in terms of focus. Um, and actually, I, I lied, so I'm going to ask one more question and then we'll wrap it up. I did see that a student was asking, um, because of the pandemic, um, it might be difficult for students to travel. And that's because if in their state, uh, their country, they have a high number of cases, the consulate is shut down and they cannot process a visa to travel. So for these students, especially if they have some courses, if they're doing labs, for example, um, are you familiar, or maybe if you can give some insight, if you know it, because I know this might be out of your control or out of your realm of, of knowledge, um, it becomes more bureaucratic here. What are exactly the processes for these students? Would they, if they're interested in pursuing their studies, but they cannot currently travel, would they be able to begin their degree remotely? Or do will they be deferred to maybe or asked to apply in a different semester when they can travel? Are you any of you familiar with the process at your universities for these students? For us, oh sorry, somebody else. Um, okay. Yes, so, uh, so for for us, we have a. Um, I've now forgotten what I was going to say. Uh, we. <laughs> Uh, we have a requirement. We have a requirement that w the students will be able to travel at some point. So they, they need to be able to show that they, um, that they will be able to get a visa. So, uh, but it doesn't mean that they have to actually be here. So um, as I, I wrote in the chat, um, we have a comparatively large number of international students. And so we, uh, our, our uh, executive board have made the decision it's not just a state decision in our case. The university has made the decision that we will support our international students, which means that most of our courses are online, and those that aren't online have online um, alternatives so that everybody can sort of finish in this normal time. Uh, last, last year, we, we had um, big problems with Corona, as, as you know, and uh, some students uh, were not allowed to travel from India to Germany, and um, they attended uh, lessons via Zoom or um, MS Teams or something like this. This was working, and the practicals um, have to be done, yeah, let's say, this year or this summer. Um, so you can shift a little bit, um, but there are a lot of practicals in our University of Applied Science. This might be a problem, but it's a big, very big advantage um, to find a job later <laughs> in, in industry. Uh, this is uh, really the, the point. Uh, our students um, liked in industry. And um, yeah, this year uh, in, in Corona times, uh, we have to, to manage this um, and some practicals you have to do later. I think. 
in our courses, the first semester is without any practical uh, exercises. So it's not a big deal to start since most of the, or actually all of the courses are in the moment uh, remote via electronic media. So that's not the, the, the urgent problem for the coming semester for the next, as far as we can see, but the situation is quite dynamic. And uh, we have to react on, on the regulations that are coming on our way during the next month. So that's at least for the start. I do not see so many problems here. Okay. Okay. That's great. And, um, and students should know that, I mean, at no time during the pandemic have universities just stopped accepting international applicants. That was never a case. Um, international students, please feel free to apply. The regulations just may be different depending on a university, whether you start remotely right away, depending on your consulate and what the restrictions are and so on. But please um, do continue to apply and don't think the pandemic will have um, an effect on, on, on that. So, um, First, I want to say thank you so much to all of our guest speakers today for being here and presenting your programs. And thank you to our participants as well for asking so many questions. I know that there are more sitting there, but we've gone a little over time and I want to respect, respect everyone's time. So any questions, you already got all of the links to every single study program course website that we talked about today. Contact details were also shared in the chat and as well as on the screen in the presentations. You can also email us at info at mygermanuniversity.com about any of the programs and we will forward your email to the respective program. So thank you all so much. I will wrap up the webinar for today and um, see our guest speakers, um, hopefully just for a brief moment for some feedback. But thank you everyone um, and see you in the next webinar.